Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the boundaries of the middle ear. The middle ear is an air-filled space within the temporal bone, which lies between the tympanic membrane laterally and the inner ear medially. It contains three ossicles which connect the tympanic membrane to the inner ear at the oval window, the malleus, the incus and the stapes. The ossicles transmit sound vibrations from the external auditory meatus into the inner ear apparatus. It's divided into two parts, the tympanic cavity, which is adjacent to the tympanic membrane, and the epitympanic recess, or the attic, which is the space superior to the tympanic cavity. The tympanic cavity connects anteromedially with the nasopharynx via the pharyngotympanic tube, otherwise known as the eustachian tube. Posterosuperiorly, it communicates with the mastoid air cells via the mastoid antrum. We've now switched to a 3D schematic to conceptualize the boundaries and structures passing through the walls of the middle ear. The middle ear has anterior, posterior, medial and lateral walls, as well as a roof and a floor. In this model, imagine you're looking directly into the right ear with an otoscope. This is a lateral view of the middle ear but we've lifted off the lateral wall formed by the tympanic membrane to look inside. This back wall here is therefore the medial wall, this is the posterior wall, this is the anterior wall, this is the roof, and this is the floor. The medial or labyrinthine wall is formed by the lateral aspect of the inner ear. The promontory is a convex protrusion formed by the bone overlying the basal turn of the cochlea. In this coronal section here, you see the relationship of the basal turn to the middle ear cleft, forming the convex protrusion of the promontory. The promontory is covered by the tympanic plexus, which receives branches from the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve 9, and branches of the internal carotid plexus. Here you can see the lesser petrosal nerve, which is essentially a continuation of the tympanic nerve. The medial wall contains two openings and two prominences. The two openings include the oval window and the round window. The oval window lies posterior superior to the cochlear promontory and serves as the attachment for the stapes footplate, which is the final point of attachment for the ossicular chain. The round window lies posterior inferior to the cochlear promontory. The two prominences include the facial canal prominence and the lateral semicircular canal prominence. The facial canal prominence is this bony ridge formed by the facial nerve canal. The lateral semicircular canal prominence sticks out laterally just above the facial nerve canal. I've switched back to the diagram because remember that the tympanic membrane has been removed in the 3D model in order to look into the middle ear cleft. The lateral or membranous wall is formed mainly by the tympanic membrane. The superior aspect is formed by the bony wall of the epitympanic recess. The roof, or the tegmental wall, is formed by a thin layer of bone known as the tegment tympani, which separates the middle ear from the middle cranial fossa. The floor, or the jugular wall, is formed by a thin layer of bone separating the tympanic cavity from the internal jugular vein. This contains a small aperture the inferior tympanic canaliculus, which transmits the tympanic branch from the glossopharyngeal nerve. This is known as Jacobson's nerve. The posterior wall is also known as the mastoid wall, and inferiorly there's a bit of bone separating the middle ear cleft from the mastoid air cells. Superiorly is the additus to the mastoid antrum, which is continuous with the epitympanic recess. The pyramidal eminence is a small conical projection in front of the vertical segment of the facial nerve. It contains the stapedius muscle and has a small opening through which the tendon passes into the middle ear. Also within the posterior wall, at the angle between the posterior and lateral walls, is the opening for the corda tympani, the posterior canaliculus, which branches off from the mastoid segment of the facial nerve, cranial nerve number 7. The corda tympani then traverses the middle ear cavity and exits via the anterior canaliculus in the anterior wall. In this model, the middle section of the nerve within the tympanic cavity has been cut. So lastly, we have the anterior or carotid wall. 
Inferiorly, there's a thin layer of bone which separates the middle ear from the carotid canal. Superiorly, it contains the opening for the eustachian tube, also known as the pharyngotympanic tube, and the opening for the tensor tympani muscle, which is contained within a bony canal. I've just switched over to an illustration which shows the same view as the 3D schematic, and let's take a look at how these structures appear anatomically. In this dissection, we're looking into the air from a lateral view, looking directly at the medial wall. Just like the model, this side is anterior and this side is posterior. Here we see the promontory formed by the bone overlying the basal turn of the cochlea, with the tympanic plexus and tympanic nerve. The stapes has been left in situ, covering the oval window. Posterosuperiorly on the lateral wall, we see the prominence of the facial canal and the prominence of the lateral semicircular canal just above it. Anteriorly, we have the tensor tympani muscle within its bony canal, just above the eustachian tube, which you can see here. This structure is the geniculate ganglion of the facial nerve, and this nerve here is the greater petrosal nerve. Looking towards the posterior wall, we see the opening to the mastoid antrum and this bit of bone separating the tympanic cavity from the mastoid air cells. Here is the pyramidal eminence, and you can see the tendon of the stapedius muscle piercing through. You can see the tympanic membrane has been dissected away, and this structure entering into the middle ear cleft at the junction of the posterior and lateral walls is the corda tympani. So that concludes this video on the anatomy of the boundaries of the middle ear. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.